Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is July the 23rd, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, as certain fighters, mysteriously, in their late 20s, suddenly lose all baby fat. Right? As we look at fighters today, and the guy looks to have no baby fat, seems to have muscles that are unnatural, you wonder how the fighter is spending the time in the gym while also spending the time doing road work while also spending the time sparring, right? There's a phrase out there, PEDs. What I need to have people understand is that even Frank Thomas, a guy who appeared before the United States Congress in some investigation against baseball, who said, hey, you know, if you are a juicer, you don't belong in the game. Even Frank Thomas these days is advertising testosterone boosters, right? They're, they're a whole group of substances people can take to increase things like testosterone or, let me reach for it here, HGH, right? Now you laugh at these. You say, come on, these are just over-the-counter things that couldn't really impact folks. Folks, you're kidding yourself. I'm just telling you that some of the over-the-counter substances today really do rev up your metabolism, right? They really will have you sleep more soundly than you've slept in quite some time. And I'm guessing that they're commonplace in boxing. Right? Let me just say, I don't think you're going to fail a drug test taking this, this supplement, right? I'm not a paid promoter of the supplement. I don't own any stock in the supplement, right? But what I am saying is that these guys are taking a lot more than clenbuterol, right? Now, don't get me wrong. It's a high threshold, to fail a drug test. In other words, most of these over-the-counter things won't trigger a failed drug test in boxing. Normally when a guy fails a drug test, you're going to hear some multisyllabic word that they took. Right? Also understand, you have entire communities staying ahead of the drug testers. So meldonium, for example, was very popular with Russian athletes before it got banned. Right? Everyone feigns innocence. Everyone says, hey, I, I didn't know that this was improving my performance. Right? Well, then why are you taking it? Who takes substances that do nothing for you? Why is it that the only people in town who know about things like Meldonian are world-class athletes? Food for thought. Okay, now there's no relationship between that diatribe, and the fight that I'm about to discuss that's in my favorites folder here online. It is a holy grail fight. Let me tip my hat and thank Ellie Setback for posting it online. It is a fight between two unbeaten fighters who are arguably the two biggest prospects in the sport right now, right? Clearly there are others. Daniel Dubois is on the verge, right? If Joe Joyce leaves the door open, right? There are other guys who an argument can be made are on the cusp. Teofimo Lopez, who fights Lomachenko next. When Ryan Garcia has a lot of Twitter followers, a lot, he's unbeaten, he's mouthy, he's arguing right now with Golden Boy. But understand, the head honcho at Golden Boy, 
This is the outfit that has Canelo, right? The present of boxing. The head honcho of Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya, calls his fighter Virgil Ortiz the future of boxing. So in my favorites folder is the amateur fight between Ryan Garcia and Virgil Ortiz. Folks, first, the scoring's an absolute farce. I'm not sure if I found the round that Ryan Garcia wins in the fight. I thought Ortiz clearly wins the fight, right? Ryan Garcia looks better in the second round than he does the first or the third round. But he's forced onto his back foot. You see in the film that he needs room to operate. And Virgil Ortiz simply will not give him the room. Just won't do it. You'll notice that Ryan Garcia has the fast hands. But let's just say on his back foot, the power isn't there. This fight is very important because it's the blueprint, in my opinion on how to fight a guy who needs space to operate, who's tall, stands a little bit upright, has blinding hand speed, can put together punches, so you have to smother his combination. Folks, style-wise, this is that fight. So if you're going to fight Ryan Garcia, let's name another big name. Who's one of the biggest young names in boxing? If you're going to fight Shakur Stevenson, this is the film to watch. You don't even have to pay attention to the punches. Just pay attention to where they are in the ring. Who's backing up who? Right? Who's on their back foot, unable to plant their front foot. Which punches are getting through, more importantly here, which punches are not? Right? Ryan Garcia has a very hard time, folks, landing right hands in this. Very hard time. In other words, Virgil Ortiz who's one of boxing's predominant power punchers, look at the KO percentage, can actually flash world-class defense deep in the pocket when he wants to. Right? So Ortiz has been quietly saying, hey, I'm ready for the best. I only want fights against guys who are going to help me improve my game. Now, given that Errol Spence is now openly admitting that that car accident was worse than was previously reported, given that Errol doesn't seem to be in a rush to fight Terrence Crawford, and who could blame him? Right? You get the feeling Errol's not in a rush to fight Manny Pacquiao. There again, who could blame him? If you've just been in a car crash and you're questioning your reflexes, you're questioning your health, you're questioning your confidence, you don't want to go in the ring against a guy the public thinks is a senior citizen in boxing who actually still has some of the fastest hands in boxing. <laughs> you're going to <laughs> you know, you lose that fight, you're going to get treated like Keith Thurman was treated after he got dropped by Manny Pacquiao. And let's remember, Thurman gets dropped early in that fight. It's not like Thurman's tired against Manny Pacquiao. He gets dropped early. Early. By the part-time boxer. Understand, Manny has a day job. He's a statesman in the Philippines. He's a member of the government. This is a guy who leaves the state house, hops in the ring, then destroys 
world-class guys 10 years younger than him. Well, let me just say, I don't know of a better guy today to fight a Terrence Crawford, to fight a Manny Pacquiao, to fight an Errol Spence, than Virgil Ortiz. Oscar De La Hoya might be wrong. Virgil Ortiz might not be the future of boxing. His moment might be right now. Right? He certainly takes care of Ryan Garcia. By the way, they gave Garcia the decision. Right? This is one of those amateur decisions to me that is almost on par with Roy Jones getting job in the 1988 Olympics. Right? Even in the amateurs, reputation matters. Well, I'll just put it to you this way. If you're looking for a young guy who takes care of guys who need space to operate, right? Tall guys who are getting by on size, who stand a little bit too upright. And if you're looking for better defense than Gravante Davis has, with a guy who's two-handed, Right, Davis is a little left hand heavy, isn't he? Then Virgil Ortiz is the guy. He's, well, let's just say he's already beaten Ryan Garcia. Right? That's the way I see it. Let me also say this too Ryan Garcia does have a chance to be great. In an earlier video, I asked the question Is he this generation's Alexis Arguello? Right? The difference between a young guy like Ryan Garcia and Alexis Arguello is that Arguello didn't need the space Ryan Garcia needs right now to operate. Right? That just, that just wasn't the case. Arguello, who by the way, never lost one of his titles in the ring. He's a guy who would move up to fight the champ in the next division. He does lose to Aaron Pryor. But understand, Arguello would be champ, would fight in that division, then would give up the belt. <laughs> right? That's the level of greatness we're talking about. Arguello, like Ryan Garcia, was a slugger who had ring coverage, who was tall. Right now, Garcia has the faster hands than Alexis Arguello. He does, right? But Arguello was a fighter's fighter. And I believe Arguello was better inside than Ryan Garcia. So Garcia, if he knows boxing history, if he wants to look at the greats, if he wants to look at guys who were built like him, who dominated the sport, I would encourage him to look at Alexis Arguello. But make no mistake, right? Virgil Ortiz is on the verge of huge things. Serious puncher. In most of his pro fights, he hasn't had to show the defense that he shows in the amateur fight against Ryan Garcia. Above average defense. More importantly, he has the kind of motor. It's a Joe Fraser motor that can get a tall guy with fast hands backing up. Right? Again, look at the film in my favorites folder here. Right? Ortiz has Garcia on this rope, on that rope, on that rope. Right? Garcia's a puncher. Major KO percentage. Stops guys early. Here he's the one backing away. Right? Garcia at this point in his career too can't control distance. Like Thomas the Hitman Hearns used to when he was younger, fighting people like Pimpino Cuevas. Right? If you're a tall guy and people are trying to bum rush you, 
You need to have tools to keep them away from your body. There's a lot to hit. Right? To keep them honest, to keep them outside. Right? I'm not sure if either Ryan Garcia or Shakur Stevenson, and I know both guys look bulletproof right now, have those skills this early in their careers. Right? We're all human. No one's infallible. Just understand, the scoring in the Ryan Garcia, Virgil Ortiz amateur fight's a farce. Ortiz, at a minimum, in my opinion, wins two of the three rounds. Quite frankly, I thought he won all three rounds. In the comment section of this video, I encourage those of you into watching young unbeaten fighters, right, who are on the verge to watch this amateur film. It's an important one. And to tell us your scorecard on who won, Garcia, Ortiz, or more accurately, in my opinion, Ortiz versus Garcia. Right? Just understand, both of these guys are unbeaten. Both of these guys want the biggest names in the sport. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.